Hello. So today we're going to get a story about how geometry got its name. And we know that geometry is the study of the relationship between shapes, surfaces, sides, angles, and it's one of the most ancient forms of mathematics. We know that this ancient form of mathematics um, came from Egypt, Egypt, a country in Africa. Um, so another name for this story, it's often called the gift of Egypt, the gift of Egypt being geometry. So early Egyptians gave us the great gift of geom geometry that we benefit from every day in our lives. We know that the ancient Egyptians understood geometry because of two important documents from their culture. And I'm gonna show you what those documents are. So this is the rind papyrus, papyrus meaning um, a kind of paper. It's actually where we get the word paper from, is from papyrus. And this was, this is dated to be about 1650 BCE before the Common Era. Um, so that means that's actually like really close to 4,000 years ago. So we can see here, of course, we see some hieroglyphic writing and we don't know what that means, but we see some shapes. We see a triangle, some kind of quadrilateral here, the sides maybe, another triangle, and then also um, the Moscow papyrus. And this is from 1700 before the Common Era. So about 50 years before this was, this was made. So here we see another quadrilateral and um, looks like maybe a measurement there. So we know the Egyptians' lives centered around the Nile. The Nile being um, the biggest river in the world and it flows right through Egypt. Oh, I should have brought up a picture of that. Here, you know what? I'm getting ahead of what's coming. So here's Egypt. Let me show some other images so you can see better. So if we click here on this image, we can see that this, this blue line is the Nile River that, that flows all the way through Egypt. So for centuries, every year, the Nile would overflow and wash down the black mud from the surrounding mountains. The annual flooding of the Nile River allowed the Egyptians to develop a very consistent production of food. Not only did the flood bring silt from the Abyssinian Mountains, it made the soil soft and easy to plow. It's a great place to grow food. The name Egypt is a Coptic word meaning black earth, black rich soil. So here we can see an example. So this was not the gift that this story is about, but sometimes gifts come to us in the form of a challenge. One problem with the flooding was that every year the floods washed away the markers that the farmers used to mark their boundaries. Year after year, they had to find a way to put back these boundary marks. So this kind of measuring taught them a great deal about geometry. So Egypt has been called the gift of the Nile and mother of geometry. This is where the word geometry comes from. Geo means earth. Metron means measure. So measuring the earth. You also have a lesson on the layers of the earth. So that geology is the study of the earth. Geometry is measuring the earth. Pretty cool. And so if you want to get into um, <laughs> um, when you're learning about the layers of the earth, if you want to look at those measurements of how deep those layers are, um, 
you can look at that and have geometry to think. Geometry was the basis for solving very practical problems that the Egyptians faced. It allowed them to reliably and accurately measure the earth. An Egyptian surveyor called an Harpidonopta discovered that if he made knots and a rope equal length apart, a special thing would happen. He tested it again and again. He would walk along with three men behind him to stand in certain places. The Harpidonoptera would be at the starting point, so maybe up here, and the first man would walk in a straight line until he reached the fourth knot from, from the beginning point of the Harpidonopta. Then he would stop. The second man would start there, turn right, and walk until he reached the third knot. Then he would stop. The third man would walk in a straight line toward the Harpidonopta, who noticed five knots were reached to close the triangle. So, if you can see here, so yeah, starting down here um, at the bottom right. So it would walk four knots up three and would notice every time if he met back at the beginning point, there would be five knots. So this ratio of three to four to five made a right angled triangle. And we'll talk more about angles and what that means to be a right angle. But we can see here a right angle will make this, um, this corner here. I wish you could see, I don't know if you can see my pointer, maybe you can. Um, this will make us, um, this like edge is like a, a square, it's perpendicular. And we'll talk more about those lines. So they didn't know why it worked. They just knew that it did. They tried it over and over and over again and they saw, oh, yep, every time we do this, this is what happens. So this worked well, very well for the Egyptians. Hundreds of years later, a Greek merchant visited Egypt because he was interested in the wealth of knowledge Egypt had. Thales was his name and he was a very successful businessman who became so successful and rich that after a few years, he was able to retire and devote all his time to mathematics, astronomy, and earth measurement. Remember, earth measurement is actually what geometry means. Although we learned that um, Thales learned about astronomy from the Babylonians, um, it, was his con it was his contribution to mathematics and especially geometry that inspired him to create a system of logical th thinking which gave birth to the science of geometry. And this is a picture of him here. So he had a very well-known student named Pythagoras. Pythagoras was sent to study the earth measurement that went on in Egypt. Pythagoras eventually proved that when using a right angle triangle in the proportion of three to four to five, so there again, which came from Egypt, that the area of a square drawn on the long side is always equal to the sum of the area of squares drawn on the other two sides. So this theorem explains why the knotted rope of the Egyptians still worked. So he took that and he showed this theorem. So that is the story just on that problem solving of having to figure out how they measured their boundaries from the flooding, geometry came to be, that measuring of the earth. Yay. So that is the story of how geometry got its name. And for your follow activity, I thought it might be fun I'm going to share this really awesome website with you and we have some virtual pattern blocks and so you can do a few things if you want to play around on this there's different pattern puzzles that you can um, you can do like ooh, I want to make a bunny so I'm gonna figure out how to make a bunny 
Oop, I'm gonna put in there. And you can, you know, you can turn these so that it make it fit, right? And let's say, uh, I don't like that color. I want it to be green. I can change the color. You can even draw if you want. I want to draw some eyes. Oh, nope. Okay. Eh. Well, I'm moving my bunny. So, my computer's getting hot. <laughs> All right, so that's one thing you can do. But really, your assignment today. Oh gosh, I hope my computer doesn't freeze. Hold on, guys. Some, here, I'm gonna stop sharing for a minute. Sometimes when I do the screen sharing, um, it seems like it's a little bit much for me to be on the Zoom screen sharing and then like trying to do stuff on websites. My computer starts to um, go a little haywire. Okay, so what I'd really like you to do is you're gonna create some kind of design and you can just use this to, to help you do that. And it can be anything. I'm just putting random stuff down. So when you're done, I'd like you to try your best. I know that like in the classroom, we would have actual pattern blocks and you would use them to trace. And you may or may not, most likely you do not have these actual pattern blocks at home, but you can um, use a straight edge, either a ruler or you can even fold. I'll do makeshift straight edges, I'll fold a piece of paper in half and then use that as you know, a way to draw my straight line. And you can draw these shapes as best you can. You can even like kind of make your own ruler of like, so if you wanna draw a hexagon here, we know that this hexagon has one, two, three, four, five, six sides and the sides are all the same length. So if you like on your straight edge kind of make a mark, you'll be able to to do that all the same sides. So your challenge is, you're gonna kind of use this as your like rough draft for your design, and then you're gonna draw it on a piece of paper. And if you'd like to do some labeling of, you know, what kind of shape is it? Like, so we said this is a hexagon, this is a trapezoid, we have a rhombus, which is a type of quadrilateral. Um, we know that these are sides, and the point where two sides meet is a vertex. And when we have more than one vertex, we have vertices. So the, label, the labeling is optional, but I um, just kind of want you to, to do some designing. And I know a lot of you like art, and we can do like really cool things with math and art. Or maybe you want to put geometry in practice and do some measurement out on the earth. Um, and you could measure like the length of your garden or how long your porch is. Anything really. So sky's the limit. So I hope you have some fun with geometry. Um, I think this site's pretty cool. and enjoy.